Hello, PR writers. This is Dr. Swanson here to talk with you about topic five of our course. Topic five being the final subject area. We're going, we're going to wrap everything up and bring it together. And hopefully in topic five, you're now looking back at what you've covered in the course. And hopefully you are seeing an improvement in your writing skills. I am. I am with everyone. Uh, I realize that some of you may be saying at this point, wow, I thought this class was going to be a whole lot easier than it was. Um, I understand that. I understand that. But I have said throughout the course, and I'll say it again, this is not the place where you become an excellent writer. This is the place where you begin the process of being an excellent writer. Writing is very much like the practice of music, and I'm not a musician. Um, that's because my parents got me started on the accordion at an early age. That's why I'm not a musician. Um, but music takes a whole lot of practice. And I don't care if you're singing, if you're playing, if you're writing, doesn't matter what you're doing. Music takes a whole lot of practice. And if we had spent a few weeks on introducing you to music, you would not say right now, I really wanted to write a symphony by the end of the class. Well, you know, that's just not going to happen. Um, the structure of this course is such that I want to introduce you to a whole lot of different types of PR writing. And we did that. We began with memos. We uh, later worked on news release. We worked on uh, social media content. We worked on analyzing an existing uh, product to talk about how that product is presented to the public. We did quizzes on AP style. We did quizzes on concepts and examples of public relations writing. In a sense, this course is like a big salad bar and you're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on anything, but you're going to sample everything. And the purpose of that is to get your wheels turning in terms of being a public relations writer, getting you to understand the basic things that PR people write and the basic ideas behind all of them. The strategy behind them is so important that, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, you can't just sit down and start writing. The news release, for example, buried in that fact set was information about the tragic accident where people fell off the ship and somebody was killed. That was buried in the fact set. It is not uncommon for students in this class to take that information, or in all or part, and drop it down into the news release. And when that happens, you've committed a major public relations fail. Why? Because there's no need for that information in the news release. Just like when Cal State Fullerton writes a news release, they don't say, oh, by the way, did you know that in 1976 there was a mass shooting in the library and seven people were killed? They don't say that because there's no need to say that. And that's strategy. That is strategic thinking. That is us as PR people looking at a fact set and going, okay, this is the fact set, but I know that I don't have to drop all the facts into the document that I'm working with. I have to think about what facts are important and I have to think about what the gatekeeper needs to know and I have to think about how I'm gonna communicate all of this information. That's the balance of public relations, the balance between art and craft, again, we're going back to the very beginning of this course, art being the, the art history, the expression, the words you use, craft being how you structure them in a document so that that document does exactly what it needs to do. Another example of craft. It's not uncommon when teams submit the Facebook post for the social media assignment, I get posts of 200 words or more. I think the record is 341 from a previous course. You know, a team submitted me 341 words for a Facebook post. Let's think about that. I know that Facebook is like your grandpa's social media platform. It's not yours, but 
humor me for a minute. 341 words isn't going to cut it in Facebook. That's enormous. It's overwhelming. That makes people go, scroll past, scroll past, scroll past, ain't going to read it. So that's a craft thing. And so each one of the assignments we worked on in this class had some balance of art and craft. And I was looking for you to find that right balance, to, find, to, to review the instructions carefully, but to think for yourself, how should this be? Who am I sending this to? What do they need to know? What do they already know? How do I express that in writing? What does the book show about examples? Maybe I should get on the internet and look at some examples. Maybe I should talk to members of my team. What are they doing? Are they doing what I'm doing? Those kinds of things. That's all what a thoughtful, mindful public relations person does. The mindless public relations person just sits down and start banging it out. You know, you've seen the the GIF with uh, uh, Jim Carrey, you know, the GIF at the typewriter. You know, that's mindless communication. We don't want to have that. We want to be mindful. Okay, so when we all come together and wrap this up in topic five, here's the things that, that we're looking at in topic five, briefly. Topic five is, if I go to the right page, Strategic writing and business communications. Why is this part of the class, Swanson? Business communications. Isn't that across the street in business? Yes, it is. The public relations is a business. And we have to think like business people. One of the most valuable things you can get in terms of experience for a PR career is experience working in the business environment. So if you're if you're working at Home Depot or Burger King or McDonald's or you know wherever, you're working at a store in the mall, don't diss that experience. That experience is really valuable because that shows you how business works, how customers think, how you need to approach customers. I've gotten business experience in a variety of areas, including working on a paddle wheel steamboat, and you don't hear people say that every day. Um, but let's just talk about that for a second. My experience on the paddle wheel steamboat was amazing. Um, I worked for four years um, while I was teaching college. It was a side job. Um, and I, I learned about the tourism business. I learned about communicating with customers. I learned about all the intricacies of the travel and tourism business. Um, I learned how to ch deal with challenging coworkers and a challenging owner who didn't understand how communication worked. Um, it was amazing experience. Uh, before that, I worked for a lot of years as a journalist. That was amazing experience because it allowed me to think like journalists think. I was a journalist, so I know how they think. So those kinds of things are, are invaluable to me as a PR person. So if you are you know, working that minimum wage job at Chipotle or wherever you are, don't diss that experience. It's really good and it's relevant to public relations because it will help you think like customers think. And, and there are times when that's going to be very important. Okay, so in topic five, the team is working on letters, customer response letters. Pick, you get to pick. You don't have to write them all. Pick what you want to write and think about it. Read the instructions very carefully. Look at my letters handout very carefully. Keep in mind that when you are responding to these customers, each one of the options has a different kind of challenge. So think about how you want to respond to that challenging customer and still keep it positive and keep the options open in terms of how you want to deal with the customer. I mean, you know, think about, it. put yourself in the customer's position. What would you want? And then put yourself in the PR person's position. We're not going to give away the store. We're not going to give away everything, but we want to find that meeting place with the customer where their needs can be met. They can go away from this experience happy. And so can we, because we've kept a customer. So um, think a lot about that kind of stuff and, and review the information in um, Topic 5 on Canvas very carefully. So those customer uh, response letters, they're important. And that's a big part of what we do in PR. Not necessarily customers. Maybe it's a client you're dealing with. Maybe it's a, a city official or elected official that you're going to deal with. Um, we have to pay a lot of attention to that interaction with these people. And we don't want to just blow them off. We want to be very thoughtful about how we approach them. And we don't want to give away the store. We don't want to give them everything. 
necessarily. Um, so we want to be thoughtful about that. Also in topic five, you're going to be writing the Lumber Camp Ethics Memo. This is a memo, uh, this is a memo to me talking about a situation that happened with employees in a business environment. And so read the instructions very carefully because they're long and they're detailed. And answer the questions that are in there. Answer the questions in your memo. Remember memo format. If you blow it on memo format, it's like it's like Monopoly and it's go back to the beginning and start again. Um, because memo format is important and you got to know how to use a memo and use it correctly. A memo doesn't have a salutation at the front like, Dear John, and at the end, thank you very much, Mary. It doesn't, memos don't have those. Um, memos are, there's a very strict format for memo. Make sure you follow it. Answer those questions to me uh, that, that you need to add, answer um, for the lumber camp ethics situation and, and focus on the key issues. Don't get carried away on stuff that doesn't have to do with the key issues there. You're going to be presenting your por portfolio to me. So send me the URL to your portfolio so I can get in there and look at your work samples and your resume. I will give you feedback on those. Is, is my feedback on the resume um, like the holy grail, the absolute truth? Not necessarily. Take my feedback. Think about it. Go to career services. Ask them what they think. Take their feedback. Think about it. Um, you know, I don't have a corner in the market on, on resumes. Neither does career services. Maybe get a book that, that shows good resumes. Look out on the internet, find some good resumes and decide for yourself what works. There are some things that definitely do not work, um, but there's a lot of things that do. Uh, just quickly, a couple of things that do not work. Um, do not misidentify this university. I have seen student resumes from this university that call this UC Fullerton. No lie, I have seen that. I have seen resumes that call this university Cal State U in Fullerton. No, that's not our name. Um, I have seen resumes that say the person is getting a degree in public relations. No, nobody gets a degree in public relations here. That may surprise you, but it's true. There are no degrees in public relations here in the Department of Communications. So you need to know what degree you're getting and you need to show it correctly on your resume because the employer will say, when the resume gets to the employer, the employer will say, if you don't know the name of the university and you don't know the degree you're working on and you can make those big mistakes and not realize it, what little mistakes will you make and not realize it? I think I'll just take this resume and put it aside. That's what the employer will say. And you don't want the employer to say that. So be very careful about those kinds of things. Think visually about the resume, what it looks like. In my comments, I will say to people, employers just scan resumes. They don't read them. And I don't mean scanning on a scanner. I mean, they take the resume and they go, mm, 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 mm. that's about how much time they give it because they're looking for keywords. They hire a lot of people. They don't need to read your resume. They're looking for the keywords that jump off the page at them. So the visual appearance of the resume is very important. Um, and I'll give you feedback on that. The work samples that you put in portfolio, put the little blurb that explains what it is if you put a news release in there that you wrote in COM 362 and you put it in there and the news release is for a company that doesn't exist, the employer is going to go, what is this? I've never heard of this place before. You know, that's because it was a hypothetical exercise. So you need to have that little blurb that explains it. The little blurb of explanation shows people what these samples are, where they came from, um, and how you enjoyed working on them and what you learned from them. That kind of stuff is really important. Employers want to know that. Um, be attentive to the final exam in this class. There is a final exam news release. Remember all the stuff, all the concepts from the news release earlier in the semester? Yeah, go back to those. Go back to that checklist that I presented in Canvas. Go back to that. Um, you know, again, news release writing is hard. I'll be the first to admit that. But we're getting you started on it. And we're getting you to think big and to realize all the development that goes into a news release. I'm actually grading very lenient. In the real world, you should not even have one mistake on a news release. One typo, one spelling error, one is a fail. You can't have even one awkward sentence, one 40-word sentence. Can't have that in the real world. So I'm being really 
kind in my grading. Honest, I am, because I want you to learn and get practice here before you go out into the real world, because mark my words, when you get out in the real world, you're going to have somebody you work with. It's either going to be your boss or a coworker or a client, and they're going to just tar your shingle. Um, <laughs> that's, that's one way of saying it. They're going to tar your shingle. Um, they're just, they're going to be hard on you in terms of the stuff that you turn out. They're not going to like it. They're going to keep kicking it back. They're, you're going to submit the document that has one mistake and they're going to come by your desk and just throw it at you. Um, that's the real world, folks. So get ready for that with gentle practice here. Practice, 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 practice. Spend a lot of time practicing. I, I go back to this a lot in the, in the videos and I hope you've been watching the videos. I hope you've gotten this far. Um practice is so important because if you don't practice you'll never get better i mean whoever your favorite mus musician is you know what how how long do you think they practice do you think they practice a lot i'm sure they do so practice 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 right writing is a skill like being a musician it's really important okay is there anything else i need to talk about here looking at my list i think i got it thank you for um your diligence in this class Thank you for your practice. Thank you for your patience. Is this class hard? Yes, it is. Um, but hard in a good way. You need this experience. Do I give a lot of feedback in this class? Oh my gosh. Do, do I dump feedback on you? There's a reason I do that. Because I want these things to soak in. So that you leave this class feeling like, wow, writing is really hard. I need to spend more time on it because I don't want you to leave this class thinking, ah, oh, 362 is done. I don't need any more work on being a writer. Got that. No, you don't. We all need practice. Even the stuff that I write, stuff I wrote 10 years ago looks like, I can't believe I wrote that. Uh, so we all need practice. We all get better. We all develop and grow. Okay, that's all I got to say. Thank you very much for your time, your energy, your patience, your attention to the feedback. Thank you very much for recognizing that this is the place where good writing begins and not the place where you polish it off. Thank you very much.